I've heard too many nonprofit leaders say the key to getting a grant from a foundation is a great proposal. A great proposal is important, but there are three keys to getting grants that are more important, and I'm going to share those keys with you today. Stay tuned. Several years back, a colleague told me a story about a woman who had a large foundation. She and her husband started it in the 1950s, but he died and she was left to run the foundation on her own. When my colleague started meeting with her, she was in her late 80s. The two hit it off and she saw him as a second son. One day, he was called to meet with her in the middle of winter in upstate New York. A servant greeted him at the door to this old rustic mansion and was escorted to the sitting room where the old woman was seated in a chair wrapped in a thick wool blanket and was warming herself by a raging fire. A while into the conversation, the fire started to burn down and she asked him to add a few logs to the fire and to use the papers next to the fireplace to get things started. When he walked closer, he saw two large stacks of papers measuring at least three feet high. As he was about to use some of the papers, he realized that these were proposals she had received. Some were very recent. After inquiring about their contents, she stated, Oh, you have no idea how many we get every day. Proposals for organizations we never intend to fund. Reality sank in that up to a year prior, his proposals probably went into that pile. A common misconception about getting a grant from a foundation is that you will get a grant if you just write a great proposal. Nothing could be further from the truth. Don't get me wrong, having the right information in a proposal is very important, but it isn't going to ensure you get a grant. There are three keys to getting grants for nonprofits that will get you the grant you desire. They are as follows. Key number one, research. Way before you even begin writing your grant proposal, you need to do your homework. You must do the proper research so that you can know which foundations to approach. Research is boring, time consuming, but oh, so necessary for success. You need to know everything there is to know about the foundation you're going to approach. Yes, I said the foundation you are going to approach. Every foundation is unique and different, and you can't lump all foundations into one category. I can't tell you how often I've seen leaders write one proposal and send it to 100 foundations and only change the salutation, the address. And then the leader is surprised when 100% of those proposals go unfunded. When you do your homework, you'll find that every foundation was established with a unique purpose, with a unique founder and board, and with unique qualifications. Don't make the mistake of treating every foundation the same. When doing your research, look for the types of organizations they fund and the types of programs or projects they fund. Find out if they support organizations like yours or programs and programs like yours that need funding. The foundations that intersect with organizations and types of programs you're are the ones you want to solicit for a grant. Once you find that intersection, contact the foundation to see if your assessment is correct and if they recommend you sending a proposal. You'd be surprised to know how many foundations don't require a proposal. If they do require a proposal and it looks like a correct connection, look for the submission deadline and number of times you can ask each year. Key number two, persistence. Most foundations will tell you no the first time you ask them, and this is where most organizations give up, and this is where you can win. I once met a foundation director who told me that no matter how good the proposal, they reject every proposal the first time. They want to see how important this is to the organization. Will they keep coming back, and will they be persistent? Since foundations must give away their funds, they're usually already committed for the year to ministries or organizations they already have relationships with. But if you know based on your research that you're calling on 
the right foundation, you can eventually get a grant if you're persistent. Since most people, especially foundation directors or trustees, are extremely busy, they realize that people will need to try many times to reach them. Most that I've met thank me for hanging in there with them and for being persistent. My research has revealed that it takes six no responses before you get the first gift. That means writing a proposal, getting it rejected, writing a new proposal, getting that rejected, and so on. Therefore, three no's is halfway to a yes. There's an old adage that I have followed personally and passed along when coaching others. Get in line, stay in line, get to the head of the line. Key number three, relationships. If you've been in development for any length of time, you know that relationships are the key to fundraising of all kinds. It's also true for foundations. Who you know and how well you know them will almost always be the determining factor in your getting a grant. You must build positive relationships with foundation trustees. I've developed relationships in a wide variety of ways. I've called them and just started asking questions to see if there's an intersection in our interests. I find out if I understand why they started, what's their mission, and what they hope to accomplish. I don't start, start by selling them on my cause. I listen for a long time. I can't tell you how often I've thought there was an intersection only to find out that my research and assumptions were incorrect. There are many times that I've had to apologize and move on. Foundation trustees seem to respect that I don't go in guns blaring but want to learn about them and help them accomplish their mission rather than asking them to help us accomplish ours. Most nonprofit leaders either forget or don't know that the foundation has a mission just like their organization. When a foundation doesn't give me a phone number, email address, or even a physical address to contact a trustee, I use, I use leverage to get to see them. I find out who knows a foundation board member or trustee. My board member, staff, or other friends have helped get me in the door too many times. I've used other organizations to get me in the door. Your research will show you what organizations they support. If you have a friend in one of those organizations, they may help you get in the door. Too often, foundations are treated like corporations rather than individuals. They are just people who have feelings and thoughts just like you and they connect with people just like you. Th treat them as such and you'll achieve the success you want from a foundation. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if there's some things that you especially liked or if there's topics you'd like to address and share this with friends. Let this community of life changers know that you're part of making a difference in our world. If you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of the release of the next video. If you wish to follow me on Instagram, go to Jim W. Dempsey, or if you have questions, go to fundraisingmasterminds.net forward slash Jim and Java. If you wish to be part of a growing community of like-minded leaders, join our Life Changers group on Facebook. If you want to know what to do and what to say on an appointment with a major donor, watch this video and take your development efforts to the next level. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.